So my name is Martin Frechou. Uh, I'm a PhD student at uh, Paris West Nanterre. And uh, today I'm going to, to speak about uh, just too late sociology. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when you're too late for just in time. Uh, and you still want to access uh, live data, uh, notably uh, Twitter data. Uh, I'll try not to repeat the content of the research note, but uh, to expand on some points uh, uh, which I could not address in the research note uh, because of uh, space constraints or because uh, uh, I was not ready yet. Uh, first, I'll try to explain and defend uh, the title of this presentation, Why Digital Paleontology? Uh, Twitter is live. It's, uh, it's the point, really. You, you watch Twitter just like you would watch TV uh, to see what's happening right now. When, thank you. Uh, when a piece of information spreads on Twitter, uh, it creates uh, what some call an information cascade. Uh, this cascade are live data. The cascade happens, goes on for a short while, and then it disappears. Uh, in my PhD dissertation, I'm trying to study the, this kind of phenomenon, uh, to map it, really. Uh, Twitter offers several ways to, to observe information cascades. The most basic one is to go to twitter.com uh, uh, you're in the middle of it uh, it's great you see a lot of details but uh, it's not always the best place to get the big picture so you rely on API access uh, Twitter offers several APIs uh, first is the streaming API also known as the firehose uh, the streaming API offers real-time complete uh, access to all tweets hosted. Uh, it's pretty hard to and pretty expensive to gain access and when you have access you have to have the resources to drink from the fibers. Uh, half a billion tweets a day uh, a month ago, that's quite a lot of data. Um, there's not much you can do with this much data besides uh, displaying it. Uh, that's what Twitter does. And storing it for future research. Uh, that's what uh, many researchers do, uh, notably the Stanford uh, Network Analysis Team, uh, which uh, works with a huge data sets. Uh, I would argue that's like uh, if a cascade is a live animal, uh, storing all Twitter data to freeze it somehow and then um, be able to view it afterwards is a bit like a taxidermy. Then there's the search API, uh, which is, I think, uh, the most uh, intuitive way to access Twitter. Uh, it's just when you enter a keyword uh, in the search box on Twitter or, or via, uh, via programmation interface. Uh, keeping with the shaky metaphors, uh, the search API would be like uh, this uh, underwater tunnel. It gives you easy access to, uh, to some data, the closest to you, but uh, you, you can't really choose what you see. The search API uh, can only search for um, a week or so uh, of tweets. Uh, Twitter says uh, six to nine days. It varies uh, uh, depending on uh, how much tweets uh, were posted in the last several days. And when you're a bit too late, the, the REST API. Uh, you cannot search 
uh, you cannot perform a full-time search. You only get uh, 150 API calls an hour. Uh, you can view the details of a tweet or of a user if you already know where to look. Uh, the, as the Twitter docs uh, put it, you need to get creative to get what you want with such limitations. So what happens when you're a bit too late and you don't have access to the full featured APIs is to me like paleontology. There are bits and pieces of data that are scattered all over the web, but you have to know where to dig. So the example I'm going to talk about uh, happened uh, a bit more than a year and a half ago. Uh, on May 1st, uh, 2011, it begins like this, uh, a Pakistani man can't sleep because of a helicopter. A um, few hours later, uh, a wrestling star Dwayne Johnson posts this tweet, and at the exact same minute, <coughs> Former uh, Donald Rumsfeld, the chief of staff, posts a most, uh, more explicit version. Uh, Osama bin Laden had been killed in a raid in Mortadad, uh, Pakistan. Uh, pretty soon, uh, people began gathering in front of the White House, waiting for a press conference, uh, which came about an hour later. Uh, responses were mixed, really. Many Americans were very vocal in their enthusiasm. Uh, some were less enthusiastic and expressed their feelings by tweeting this sentence uh, by Mark Twain, which is actually not by Mark Twain. But, uh, <laughs> I guess that uh, Mark Twain is a is to Americans as uh, with um, Winston Churchill to British people. He, he gets uh, nice quotes are attributed to him by default. <laughs> <laughs> and in France, it's uh, Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> and uh, other Americans uh, were a bit uneasy with the, the Bin Laden raid. Uh, so they treated this quote by Martin Luther King Jr. And as you may have guessed, it was not uh, <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. never said that. Uh, so, how did this happen? Uh, how this, did this misattributed quote go viral? Uh, that's a job for a digital paleontologist. Uh, we are fortunate in this case because uh, we know where it all started on Facebook. That's uh, uh, Jessica Dovey, who, who teaches English to middle schoolers in Japan, uh, posted this on her Facebook wall. It's, uh, it was a private wall posting. Uh, you can see the little lock next to the timestamp. She posted this on 12.15 uh, p.m. Is some time. So, how did it go from this private Facebook post to a viral misattributed quote on Twitter? Uh, I was ready to say we have no idea what, uh, what happened, but I'll make a guess. About two hours later, this was posted on TweetLonger, uh, which is a service to as the name implies, uh, to post uh, messages that are too long for the uh, 140 characters of uh, tweets. So here you can see uh, that the first sentence, which was in the, pre in the original posting, the first sentence is not uh, inside the quote, posted on tweet longer it goes inside the code. So suddenly, Martin Luther King tells that. Uh, 
80 people tweeted this <coughs> page. Uh, we can't find any uh, now because uh, uh, meanwhile these tweets were deleted, uh, probably in chain. Uh, fortunately, there are Twitter archives uh, that uh, archive content as it is posted. We will see uh, more about that later. Uh, this is the first um, tweet that I could find where there's only the first phrase, the first sentence, and it is attributed to Martin Luther King. Uh, it still links to the uh, to the tweet longer post. It's 2:42 p.m., so about uh, 20 minutes uh, late. Then this tweet uh, only has the sentence and the attribution. 10 minutes later. <coughs> 23 minutes later, the sentence reaches Pen Gillette's account. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Pendulette, it's a magician. Uh, it's, he's pretty famous in the US and he's got like uh, a million and a half uh, followers. Uh, so from there, the code goes uh, viral and journalists begin to investigate uh, the code, which seems just a little bit too fitting to. To, it seems too great to Megan McHarlow at the Atlantic. So she writes this article uh, questioning the uh, veracity of the Martin Luther King quote. Uh, this in turn uh, sparks an answer from uh, Jessica Dovey, who originally posted the sentence on our Facebook. So using rather conventional uh, techniques such as uh, publishing an uh, email, uh, Megan McArdle actually found the origin of the, of the cascade, uh, which we would have been completely unable to do uh, using uh, programming and uh, API access. Uh, the techniques used by journalists in this case are a bit low-tech. Uh, they used uh, Google with a uh, date range filter to, to check uh, whether or not the sentence uh, was somewhere to be found on the internet uh, more than uh, 48 hours ago and discovered that it was uh, probably fake. Uh, following this article at the Atlantic, uh, Penn Gillette uh, tweeted a retractation of sorts. It was not very much retweeted, only 50 times, uh, whereas that's 100 times less than the, his original tweet, I guess. Salon.com uh, uh, published an article accusing Benjilet of actually forging the, the quote. Uh, it's more than a day after it happened, but the Salon journalist uh, did not manage to find uh, an <coughs> older tweet than Benjilet's tweet. This suggests that this journalist uh, doesn't really know how to search Twitter uh, because he had the D search API, which is the simplest one to use, and uh, I don't know, maybe he wanted to put the blame on Angela, but uh, anyway, he published his article. Uh, Angela reacted. Again, more the interesting thing is that uh, right now the Salon article has disappeared from the web. Uh, I found it in Google's cache uh, two days ago. Yesterday, where I was uh, putting the <laughs> finishing touch to this presentation, I tried to access the Google cache again. It was gone. Uh, 
whereas Angelette did, did not delete any of his tweets, uh, which is a rather bold move, I guess, because uh, he came and he came and up quite a bit of fire for a few hours. Uh, everybody was blaming him. So this is a day trend filter uh, you can use uh, to uh, to limit search results in Google uh, to check to search for a particular day trend. Uh, in this case, if you want to see if a quote uh, was newly fabricated, uh, you would only uh, select the last few days or so, uh, uh, any day except for the last few days, and check if you can find some results. There are none. It means that Google only learned of the search, uh, the search phrase you entered uh, very recently. So after the Atlantic uh, blogs and uh, other media players uh, took it from there, and this sparked another branch of the cascade on Twitter of people tweeting that the actual uh, the first uh, cascade, the quote, was actually fake. Uh, here is the, this first uh, tweet that I can find uh, stating that the quote is fake uh, was actually very early but uh, it, it had like two retweets uh, because it uh, on Twitter it's hard to it's hard for a dissenting voice to be heard. Uh, you either go with the flow, uh, or uh, you have to put quite a bit of work to change uh, the flow. Uh, so what people actually do is tweeting uh, a link to uh, an article which uh, uh, to the for example, this uh, very well-researched and well-documented uh, article uh, at the Atlantic, uh, uh, it gives a, a source and some credibility to the tweet. Uh, what strikes me here is that uh, in the first part of the phenomenon, people like blindly retweet a quote. They don't modify it. They just hit retweet. But when it comes to uh, going back on what you said, uh, retracting it, uh, they use their own words and they give a source. Okay. Uh, so the cas in red is the first cascade, in yellow is the second, uh, the retractation. As you can see, it dies off pretty quickly. Uh, the tools I used uh, for this uh, research, uh, besides Google and, uh, and the obvious, it's mostly a Twitter archive called Topsy. Uh, Topsy is interesting among Twitter archives because uh, it allows you to search within a, a day range, so it, it's pretty great when you come uh, after the fact. Uh, so there's a web access, there's an API access, um, uh, the API is called Otter, there is a Python uh, library, but uh, you can just access the, uh, <coughs> the REST API, which is uh, what I did. Uh, so I guess the question is, how much does Topsy archive? Uh, the real question is, what does Topsy archive? Tweets are recorded when they contain a link or when they were re uh, retweeted. <coughs> it means that uh, only networked content has value to Twitter, uh, to, to Topsy. They don't... Um, uh, they make no assumption based on the textual content of tweets. Uh, what, what's of importance to them is, does this tweet uh, contain a link? Uh, there's also something 
pretty interesting in Topsy, it's that uh, Topsy records tweets uh, when they are posted. So if you delete a tweet afterward, or if you close your account, uh, it's not on Twitter anymore, but it's still on Topsy. It's a problem to them. Uh, they want their archive to be as, uh, I don't know, uh, as accurate as possible. So this is, uh, for example, my Topsy page, and I, I can uh, sync it. Uh, that means uh, uh, this will uh, squash the discrepancies uh, between my actual Twitter account and the Topsy version. It's something to keep in mind when you use Topsy data. It's, it's not Twitter, it's uh, more of a ghost image of uh, what Twitter once was. Uh, in the first part of my analysis, uh, there were uh, 2,600 or so uh, authors, and almost 400 were unavailable on Twitter uh, 18 months later. So it's quite a big discrepancy. Now, as for the question of how much Topsy actually archives, it's, it has become pretty hard to get uh, a Twitter data set. Uh, Twitter changed its uh, terms of service recently, and many big data sets that were publicly available uh, are not anymore. Uh, so I used the streaming API to get uh, a small sample, uh, 100,000 as you can see, Topsy's top coverage is, would be, in this case, about 12%. I guess it's decent enough. Some closing remarks. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about uh, resource decay. Uh, for live web data, uh, mostly around the uh, Arab Spring revolutions. In this case, we can see that uh, decay is not uh, uniform. Uh, it's not random. Uh, tweets that have value to someone, uh, tweets that enrich the social graph, uh, <coughs> get archived. Uh, isolated tweets do not. Moreover, media coverage uh, plays a very important part. Uh, we could see there that it both uh, allowed us to see parts of the cascade that would have stayed in the dark, uh, most notably on Facebook, and it participated in the phenomenon itself, uh, identifying the misattribution of the code and creating the second part of the cascade. Uh, I think journalism and data investigation techniques are com complementary and will probably fuse. I think uh, data journalism will be on a lot of the buzzword list of the year uh, in, a, in a few weeks. <coughs> and that's it. Thank you. Questions? Can we go back to the slides that shows the top C's uh, uh, statistics? Uh, this one? Yeah, this one. No, 12%. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this 12% is over the, um, is it 174,000 tweets or is over the uh, smaller set which contain? Uh, it's, a, it's a random set uh, offered by Twitter. Twitter offers uh, um, the streaming API as an access point called a uh, sample, uh, which gives you a randomized sample of all tweets yeah. currently posted. So Topsy's coverage is limited by the fire hose? Uh, to, uh, Topsy, no, has fire, uh, Topsy has full fire hose access. Uh, they, yeah. Uh, yeah. means, uh, it, it can have all the yeah. Topsy, uh, Topsy is a, a premium partner of Twitter. It's about the only uh, part of the Twitter ecosystem which was happy with the latest uh, TOS changes. So you're saying that the coverage here is, shows that
proxy doesn't cover all tweets that all retweets and all tweets with. Uh, yeah, uh, Topsy, Topsy has access to all tweets, but they only archive a small part. Uh, Do you know why? I guess because the resources would be too great uh, to uh, archive the whole Twitter. That is, uh, and I guess to them, uh, non-network non uh, content with no link has no value. Uh, they, want, uh, they want to build a graph. But that's my guess. I, uh, they, they don't communicate on things like that. It was pretty hard to to know how they choose and what they are okay. Antonio, uh, I was wondering if, uh, if you could mm, uh, let's say reshape what you say about digital decay in terms of uh, 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 rights uh, to access the data, like you just you know start doing here. I mean. Uh, the best way for social scientists today mm -hmm. to have access to this data before it's too late mm -hmm. is, well, uh, be employed by Twitter or Facebook mm -hmm. or anyway, have some kind of it. So, uh, how does this kind of uh, uh, embeddedness uh, plays uh, out with, uh, with this, with this, with the, with the case? Do you think that for people who are actually inside those uh, uh, those companies. Well, it's pretty different. Uh, there are, uh, for example, uh, pretty interesting papers on uh, uh, cascade dissemination on Facebook, uh, written by Facebook employees. We have no way to know uh, to to assess what they uh, what they publish because only them have access to to the data. As for Twitter, it's a bit complicated because, as they put it, you can be creative and have access to a significant sample. Uh, and frankly, I don't know what I would do if I had a full firewall like that. So, it's a creative constraint. I don't know whether you said it or not, how much cost the, the, now the firewall access? Uh, I don't know, it's not public. Uh, uh, it's been a bit of a couple of, of, of price, but I don't know whether this is changing or not. Okay. To, to Does someone know the cost of the some wild figures like seventeen thousand per month? Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Marta. I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry, I did not hear you. Uh, I did not. Um, you can generate an RSS feed from Twitter and store it. Do you work like this, or do you know people are doing this? Uh, I, I have read articles uh, from people uh, using this technique. I am not sure you can still do it because uh, the Twitter uh, API is really closing uh, since uh, the last. Uh, Five or six months or so. Uh, you can't do it with, with an well. You can't do it easily with an hashtag anymore. I mean, it no. used to be very easy to create an RSS feed with an hashtag. It's, to my knowledge, it's not easy at least. I, just, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> so um, just just a remark. So we have been doing this you know, uh, for the last one year, and uh, we noticed that it's getting harder and harder. And uh, I think that thing due to the uh, reluctance of. Uh, Twitter to uh, allow researchers to just really use the content for research. Um, so they're thinking of commercializing the content. So uh, we prepared to face a lot of uh, you know, uh, issues and we try to do that. Uh, we are still continuing, uh, but we don't know how long we can last. <laughs> Other questions? Hmm. We want a methodological question. How can you uh, um, work uh, with this data to allow another researchers to retest your findings? Uh, can you do some uh, some uh, um, <coughs> copy of, of, of your data set which, which you used or something like that? Yes, of course. Uh, the data I gather is, uh, is in JSON form. 
so it's uh, standard and easily uh, oh, yeah. transfer, transferable. <coughs> uh, I, the way I showed it uh, today is a bit uh, too. I don't know, it was like telling a story, but uh, it's more. Um, uh, when I'm working, it's more like a graph. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. and, and you can publish then link to your data set or something like that? Uh, I'm not sure I can publish it, but uh, I can, uh, I'm not sure I have the right to publish it, but uh, I can state that oh, <laughs> someone yeah. can contact me. And, uh, In contact, yeah.